What the fuck is that? No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to go that hard on the intro. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? All one of our fans, if we're lucky. Um, Maybe this two. Is, oh, possibly two. It would be our moms. Well, maybe yep. three because then Matab, the because we're basically piggybacking off of his media platform. Uh, yeah, so welcome to the first inaugural episode of Two Guys, One Ball, the NBA podcast that's basically every other podcast, but done by us. Therefore, special. There we go. And that's why I like the r Root mentality. So to start off, we're going to nice and uh, do some introductions, and we'll let r Root Kara go first. Okay, I was not prepared to go first, so I will start yeah, with my name. Just reference this video was in, like entirely planned for and set up with uh, about 20 minutes, less than that, so uh, don't have high hopes for the first episode. Or any episode, for that matter. Or any episode. I like Arsh's mentality on this. All right, so my name is Arsh, and LeBron James is the GOAT, and... I think that is all the introduction that you need thus far. Okay, that's pretty powerful stuff. We'll we'll Thank get you. into the nitty gritty of that statement later because I have some thoughts on it, and it's one of the so you kind of gave away one of our topics early, which is just great. I spent oh, so I'm so hard, sorry hard planning this, and you just threw it away. Um, so now I'll introduce myself. I'm Ethan. How's it going? I played. Professional basketball. No, I'm kidding. I played basketball since I was five years old. High you played school. CY. It's CY. Shout out to CYDC, best club in Calgary. All the other clubs irrelevant. CYDC is the best. Teaches hard work and all that. So I'm a proud CY, CY gang for life. And that was segment one of Ethan talking about CYDC. Segment one of me bitching about why I'm not in the NBA currently. It's because uh, of his injuries. That's the only reason. Skill is not even a question. Oh, no, God. Like, Steve Nash cries when I shoot. Like, I'm just that good. Oh, yeah. And in case you guys didn't know, all one of you, or two, sorry, we are in Canada, and that's why I said Steve Nash. So you will get many Canadian references. Shout out to Jamal Murray throughout the entire show. Shout out to Andrew Wiggins hanging on that back wall as well. Yeah, we got Andrew Wiggins, Tristan Thompson, and a nameless Lakers jersey that a friend got me for free. So, gotta love the free merch. All right, Arsh, any other notes before we get right back into it? Anything about how it's going to go going forward? Let's just jump right in. Okay, way to rip off Philip DeFranco. <laughs> Let's just jump into it. Um, all right, okay, first it's okay. of the entire podcast is a speed fire round to get to know your hosts, which is a term we're going to use very loosely. Okay. It's more idiots talking about stuff to, to no one who cares. Um, so I'm going to give Arsh just a list of topics. I'm going to get his opinion. I'm going to tell him if he's right or wrong based on my opinion, because my opinion's right. Yes. Okay. Got it. It's about five questions. Then we can get into the nitty gritty about some of them if he thinks it's worth it. So you can hit the sure. pause button if you think that yours is actually right, or we can just keep going. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Favorite team? Um, okay, I know we said rapid fire, but I got to think about this because favorite all time would probably be the Toronto Raptors, but Canada. But my bandwagon favorite's got to be the Lakers. No. Okay. Well, A, they're false for both of them. The real correct answer is the Cavaliers are the best team in the NBA. The Cavaliers are irrelevant. You beat the Nets and that's it. So we're doing our first pause on the first question. All right. So I'm going to unpack why the Cavs are the best. Okay. Tristan Thompson was- Doesn't play for you anymore. In 2012, the highest drafted Canadian. They drafted subsequently Anthony Bennett, number one. We don't talk about that. Do and then Andrew Wiggins, who got traded away, and thanks to that trade, we got a championship. So the Cavs have a great Canadian connection, and they came back from a three-to-one lead. So they are obviously the best team ever. Okay. Follow-up question: Why haven't they drafted you? All right. Moving on to our next topic <laughs> is who is the greatest player of all time? Okay, I give this one away pretty early. It's LeBron James. Um, it is not up for debate, and that is it. You know, that is a correct answer. 
I said LeBron when done. I have my nice piece of paper with eight lines of words written down. Nice. Um, yeah, so I said LeBron when he's done his career. So that's a nice little asterisk because I don't think right now he's the best. You but know what? That's fair. That's fair. And a possible MVP on the way. I would agree. I think if he wins one more championship, Jordan fans can no longer use the rings excuse. Just one more means the ring excuse goes down the drain because I mean, more. five to six, it's it's pretty much the same. You Kobe know, had five, like Tim had five, Jordan had go. six, whatever. LeBron's going to get five. You know, Larry you, you Bird, can the, finally the put the ring argument to rest. Larry Bird, the white guy goat, only had three chips. So exactly. I'm just saying chips aren't all that matter. Uh, next question. Favorite underrated player? I'm going to put you on the spot for this one. Fred Van Fleet. Buddy dropped 50, what, seven, no, 52 the other night? 54, 54. 54 set a franchise record. I don't know if you can call him underrated at this point. He is still underrated. His shooting is elite. It's because he doesn't put up big numbers on a consistent basis. We all know he can do what he's doing. Like, his numbers are there. His percentages, fine, efficient. Agreed. But he's on the Raptors. And okay, there's nothing wrong with the Raptors, but that's true. He's not. He he got slept on by a lot of teams, and he still is for the most part. Outside of Canada and the hype around the Raptors, no one really cares about who Fred Van Fleet is. And I think for that reason, he is underrated. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that one. I would have gone if you're going that route, Norman Powell for the Raptors. I think he's actually been pretty stellar the past few years. I remember thinking he was going to be an all-star eventually. And yeah. Just dropped. So there was, was that one playoff series. I think it was 2016, 2017, yeah, where they just went off. He had that one dunk that they kept showing over and over and yeah. over. That was against the Bucks, I think, too. Yeah. But that was pretty raw. But no, I would say for my favorite underrated player, Lou Dort, who to his ex to fairness, I don't know if you can call him underrated at this point because he's getting so much hype. But he's getting a, recognized. Canadian, and we're going to be less gross about saying Canadian more often, but B, he's built like a linebacker. So he can guard anything, like even a big man, you know, you'd have trouble backing him down. Like that size is terrifying. You see a short stocky kid, even if you're like a six, three guard and you're horrified. Cause you're like, I can't bully this guy. Exactly. He went he, off in the bubble, didn't he? He went off in the bubble. He's putting up career numbers this year. He's just yep. and he's like, give, give the kid a bit of time. And I think he's going to go big places. I call him kid, but I'm 20 and turning 21 next month. So oh, that's old. Yeah, That's Arsh's a category. Uh, nice little context of how me and Arsh met. We met in school in grade four, and Arsh was, how old were you in grade four? Like seven. Yeah, and I was eight. like nine to ten. So Arsh's big brain is mm -hmm. the best way I'll put this. <laughs> so next topic, because we'll dive into the backstories as we go further, because you guys all care. All, so all three of you care. That's right. All we just gained people. one follower. You know that? You know the meme of the guy who's like DJing and there's like a crowd of like three guys just turning up? Yeah, yeah. How do I feel about this podcast? I feel like we're the DJ. Yep. And the tubs, all three of the people watching. <laughs> all the burner accounts, because you know he doesn't have that many followers. Yeah, Matab, and then you've got Bra Hive Entertainment. <laughs> and then the burner account. His, so it's his Finsta, his regular, and Bra Hive Entertainment. Black Those Belt MMA, whatever that one is. Black Belt Bra. That, that's what it is. Black Belt Bra. What about, um, what was it? Mr. No, Mr. Give Your Girl Back. Oh, maybe that one as well. Possibly. Yeah, our employer, employer, we're never getting paid. Um, <laughs> He's had a quite a storied career. Look yeah, at he blew content. up on TikTok though, so he's got that going for him. So right, just quick shout out, sponsor of the day, because we have no sponsors. I'm just gonna say it because all the cool videos say it. For our Hive Entertainment, your premier source of content. Yes. No specific category, just content. It's content. It's content. It's and that's content. all you need. All right. So back to the rapid fire that hasn't been so rapid. We like so to take our time. Yeah, exactly. It's a slow burn. We are in yeah. no rush. I don't have exams and stuff. That's no. Yeah, it's not like I have a midterm in like two days. No. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Education. Um, 2021 champions. Lakers. Lake show. Lakers. 
I picked the hopeful route because I know the Lakers are going to win. It's dead set, but I went with the 76ers because no, I never. Um, I want the way Joel Embiid has changed his game this year, who has increased his production but le- decreased his usage, yet still had such a huge impact on both ends. I, I one deserves it. Ben Simmons is allowed, Doc Rivers is letting him play how he wants to play. Like he's not pressured to shoot or anything. Tobias Harris is playing great. Danny Green was a great addition. Like, Overall, I do think the Sixers have a chance to come out of the East, and I think they could give the Lakers some challenges when it comes to size at the guard position. I still do not trust the process. I have the Nets coming out of the East. We'll get into that later. Oh, just we'll to There's so much to unpack with the Nets, and I'm going to find some original questions to ask about them because everyone knows every question. True. Next question, though. Favorite player of all time? Um, DeMar DeRozan. Or Kobe Bryant. Tomorrow is a tough one as a Raptors fan. It is. It hurt. It hurt a lot. We got a ring out of it, but but Demar. Demar didn't. Demar, I say it. Demar, I like it. <laughs> Shout out to Champagne Poppy. Oh my God, Masai Ujiri is just so cold and heartless. Dwayne Casey and Demar, the two people who made the Rams Raptors. Oh my God, that hurt. The Dwayne Casey. That was right after he won um, Coach of the Year as well. Yeah, I was cold. I was cold. Cold, but it, uh, I'm sad to see how Detroit's been doing under his under his reign, which is unfortunate. And Demar, and it's Detroit. Demar's been okay, and I do like the young Spurs. I think in like three years, top three seed. These Spurs are just a dynasty that doesn't die. Like they didn't make the playoffs last year, though. Yeah, that was one year. That was the first year they missed, right? After like what? Twenty years. Nineteen or twenty years since like Tim Duncan. And but, they're in – th- I'm pretty sure they're in a playoff spot right now. We're really close, like uh, top 10 in the West or something. Well, I'm going to confirm my sources, aka nba.com slash Google. They're fifth. They are fifth. And that's with their starting lineup that includes Lonnie Walker, Keldon Johnson, and, oh, God, who's the other really, really, really young player? They just have some super young talent. And DeJounte Murray, had he not – literally snapped his leg in half, I think would be an all-star by now, quite frankly. For real, he would. Yeah. Same thing how I feel about Karis Levert this year. Had he not been in, I think Karis Levert could just go off next year, become an all-star in Indy. But we'll get into that later. Shock or shock of the season. Got to be the Harden trade. Really? Yeah. I wasn't expecting him to go to the Nets. I thought... Because the hype around it had died down. He wanted out in the summer. And that time, everyone was like, there's no way the Nets give up anything. They have nothing to give up, blah, blah, blah. And then it was like, oh, by the way, he's going to Brooklyn. And it was just like, what? How? Oh, I had a follow-up because I didn't put that actually as mine. But So you're wrong. But Okay. Do you think – who do you think won the trade the most? I'm not saying like – got the most in terms of just total net total but who won based on what they gave up for what they got Houston I think Houston won see I'm going to be very very I'm going to say this unbiased the Cavs they got a solid role player a starting role player in Torian Prince and Jared Allen one of my favorite players who I think in two years could be an all-star with the Cavs if he signs with them again for like dirt like the no. only thing the only thing I didn't like about the Jared Allen going to Cleveland was that the Cavs already have Andre Drummond now they've got two big centers Allen was finally getting the starting position in Brooklyn and he was just popping off now he's gonna have to start coming off the bench it's good that he got out of Brooklyn man DeAndre Jordan was sucking his minutes like and DeAndre Jordan is a big he can't learn from I feel like at least with the Cavs before Andre Drummond gets traded, which I am crossing my fingers he does for picks, before that happens, Jared Allen's going to learn some really good assets to his game. Like he has, I, I like Jared Allen's post game, but it could still use some bodying. Oh, he can dunk so nicely. He can. Oh, yeah. My God. He can catch a body whenever he wants. That's true. In post, which is the hardest thing. As a guy who played center for a sizable portion of my career. That's only because you were a human giant. Yeah, I'm now 6'3", 
which does not seem like that. But back in the day when I was in grade six, I was about six feet. So that was a good time. Yeah. Better days. It <laughs> like, looked more promising back then than it did any time after. All right, so that is the end of our speed rounds. Now we're just gonna talk general topics and debate some dumb stuff. Probably throw out some useless, unbased, unfact-based opinions, and hopefully get better or worse as the show continues. Nice. All right, 2021 playoff predictions, Arsh. Let's hear top two seeds, top bottom seeds, each conference. Okay. I would have to say the top two seeds in the East will be the Nets and the Sixers. I think Sixers will be first, actually. Sixers first, Nets second. Bottom two, I don't think it's any surprise. It'll probably stay Detroit and Washington. How um, are the Heat so low? Holy shit. Yo, okay. Everyone's saying that there's an asterisk next to um, LeBron's ring because this same Heat team was in the finals last year, and now they're third last in the East. But Jimmy Butler literally missed 10 games this season. He hasn't played in 10 straight games. They're on a one-game winning streak, so... Exactly. See, it's, it's already turned around. It's pretty oh, much yeah. a 12-game win streak already. Basically, they've got a 61 season in the making. Yep, 100%. Or in a 72-game season. I think they'll win 84. All 84 oh, this year. What about the other 72? Like, there's 156 games in the season, right? Yep. Damn. I wish we could have that much. I miss it. It's good time. <laughs> All right, so Western Conference picks. West, I don't think Utah is going to stay in first. I I don't mean to be a hater, but I I don't think they'll, hey, Sha- they'll last. Shaquille O'Roop Kara. Shaquille O'Neal, I'm fine with that. Got three rings with Kobe. Okay. <laughs> I would put the Double. Lakers and Clippers. Lakers, Clippers? Yeah. L-A-L-L-A-C. All right, and bottom two. Bottom two, I would say T Wolves and the Pelicans. That's really harsh. Holy shit, the Mavericks are also really bad this year. Jeez. Yeah, they've been, they've been gonna very come. mid. All right, so let's unpack your first two picks. Why would you say Nets are going to become first overall when they have historically amazing offense? But I thought they're like they also have the exact same except vice versa for defense, as in they have the worst defense in history contested. I said they'd be second. The Sixers would stay first. Oh, you had Sixers first? Yeah, I think the Sixers will stay first. They, they're, they're playing well. They'll just continue out. You know, I actually have to agree with you on this because I think of the Nets similar to how the Raptors were in their championship season because it was Bucks yeah. were the dominant phase during the regular season. But when you look at the rosters of – the Nets and the Sixers, I think despite the Sixers, they'll have or the Nets will have struggles throughout the year. Like chemistry is a thing. Steve Nash, it's his first year coaching, but he's gonna be amazing. He's gonna be amazing. He's gonna win a ring at some guys. point. Top five point guard all the time. Um but yeah, I think once they get their stuff together, it'll click. And when playoff intensity hits, despite the Kyrie drama and all that, I think all the drama is way blown out of proportion. Same. So, I do too. And I know Kyrie is an interesting character. I think Kyrie to basketball is Kanye to rap, if that makes sense. I get what you mean. As in just can be like the best at times, but also the worst at times. Yep. Of mice and men, I think. Um, But no, I think overall they should be able to get their shit together by that time. And when they turn it on, they'll have players who have been proven to step up in playoff situations. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's the veterans. The Sixers have made it, what, to the the, the East, semi-Eastern Conference Finals? I don't even have – did they go – where did they finish last season? I think the Kawhi shot – was the Kawhi shot against – That was in the they second did, round. They were second – they were um, – I thought they got out first round last year. I don't remember throwing the bubble. I remember the, the second, Kawhi shot was the second finals. round. So they really haven't even gone that far. They've never made a deep playoff run. So – I think the Nets, boys. you've got Durant, you've got Kyrie, who both won rings. Harden is just another asset for them. I think the Nets will go further. I think Harden, despite adapting to his role seamlessly as a distributor, and we all knew he had the passing ability, the idea he'd be selfish is dumb because it was his role. 
in Houston was volume shooter, but now we know he can be a distributor, super talented. I have he has never shown up in playoffs. Okay, but He's when you're already one. averaging 40 points a game, how much more can you show up? In playoffs, he averaged like 22. Yeah, but I mean, comparing – wait, 22? It's an exaggeration. I can pull up the stats. 22? I can call our fact check guy. Our fact check guy, um, Jose Calderon. He's had a rough year <laughs> since leaving the NBA. Um, we should actually make a fact check guy. James Harden. Okay. I swear, like, his playoff career average has to be around 24 points. And that is on my life. Okay, just kidding. No, yeah, it's 23.5. So, like, round up 24 Uh, points. I am a god. Because you look at his numbers, and they're all down from his main statistical years. Like, you look at Houston 2019, he's having 34.3, dropped to 30, or to, sorry, I can't read, to 29.2. Or 29.6. He went from 36.1 to 31.6. Like, he's yeah. never showed up. His assists dropped every time. Like, his numbers do not stay consistent. I don't know if it's a pressure thing. I can't attest. I don't know the guy. We aren't NBA insiders. We don't know those Woj bombs all the time. But it just shows he's, like, he's just not been proven in playoff situations. So I wonder if having those other two guys who can gel with would help. I mean, I think Durant can carry a team fairly well, even without two other All-Stars on his team. I think the Nets will still go far. KD can carry anything except the 180, 135 bench in the combine. <laughs> Only thing that man can't do. So if, like you ever a twig. Want, if you ever want a humble brag, say you can bench more than KD if you can get two plates on. Or a plate on each side, I guess. Yeah. That's all you I need. mean, honestly, if you could bench anything, you could probably just get away with saying it. Yeah, honestly, like, I love those <laughs> things where it's like, LeBron, I never, or LeBron, I came back, Kobe, I never left, KD, I never left. <laughs> Funniest memes I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> uh, we should have so, a meme segment in future episodes, just go through NBA memes. <laughs> I'm very down for that. Um, I'm going to write that down, meme segment. All right, so now we're going to go Wizards Pistons. No hope? Yeah. No hope. I want the Wizards to move Bradley Beal so bad. I want him out of Washington. Where do you think he should go, though? Okay, there was an idea that, that I had originally when the Nets made the Harden trade, which I don't think I like anymore, but it was Beal for Kyrie, like a one-for-one. One. Oh. It was back when the that drama for Kyrie valuable. was just super, super high, and it was just like, you know what, get him out. Replacing like high, you mean like, or do you mean like high in terms of stock? Like the drama was just really high. There was just okay. so much drama around him. Fair enough. That was what I was thinking. I think best landing spot for him. Well, no shit. If you're talking best Lakers, but I think I don't want him on the Nuggets because I want Jamal to shine, and Jamal's had a rough year. Not a rough yeah. year. He's, He's increased his stats every year, but he's not the star I thought he'd be, which I'm going to talk about next year. But I think he'd fit in really good with the Nuggets. If you had Nikola distributing, like, because Bradley Beal isn't a guy you should run offense through. He's the Chris Middleton to a Giannis, I think. Like, he's a super That's talented fair. secondary option. I like his skill set just doesn't seem it's like Shaq's argument for Donovan Mitchell. Like, he has the scoring, he has everything, but he doesn't have what it takes to be great. That is fair. I mean, we're seeing it right now, right? Like the Wizards. Bradley Beal is a great player. Bradley he is a great player. The Shaq's definition of like, I, I agree, like to elevate your game to that status. I don't know if Bradley Beal has that. You look at his statistics and yeah, he's averaging like 40 plus a game for like the last 10 games or whatever. He just set an NBA record for most losses with 40 plus games. Like, that, that just goes to show that scoring isn't everything. He could be a demon on the stat sheet, but he's still not going to win. So it's just, it's not worth it. And he does have the demon on the stat sheets on his roster in Russell Westbrook. Oh yeah, Brick City. You see, I used to, I, I won't even get into Russ right now. Let's go to the Western, <laughs> Northeast, Southwest, Western Conference. Because <laughs> I know Matab would love me to make fun of Russell Westbrook. Um, Lakers on top. 
I can't really disagree with that. I feel like the Lakers also will rest their guys a lot and they'll cost them games. I don't think they care about seeding. They really don't. Because sure. I'd rather play the Warriors than the healthy Blazers any day. Anyone would. Like, it's just a smart decision. Why would you want to play Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum when you could just play Steph? Well, and they got role players too who are involved in. There's been, what, seven? Like, they had nine available players just purely based on injury, not even COVID protocols at their yeah. most recent game. That's ridiculous. Like, I sympathize with them so much as an injury prone, you, former student athlete. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, but I think, I, I don't think the Lakers will be number one. I think Clippers will take it from them again. Like you said, I, I don't see the Jazz. They are the best three-point three shooting team almost in history at this point. But I don't know if you can sustain that. You can't rely on that. That's Once it goes downhill, it hits hard, and you have to find a way to adapt your game, which will take some games off, I believe. You'd put Clippers but, above Lakers? They're not going to do good in playoffs. No, they won't. But they'll do great in regular season. I mean, like, you look at guys like Kawhi, PG, despite how much people hate him, I know you don't like him. I don't. He's Never did. He's having another all NBA year. Like, he's an absolute beast. He's increased his assist numbers. He's playmaking. He's elevated his game, in my opinion. But he so still chokes look, every year in playoffs, though. So we're not talking about playoffs right now, Arsh. We're talking about regular season. I mean, you brought the same argument in for James Harden. Why not here? Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I'll give you that. But I. I do think the Clippers will pull out on top, unless Kawhi gets too much load management. Shout out to John Baluku <laughs> for load management. And then and you Kawhi, have your Kawhi should never have left Toronto. If he was in Toronto, he could have legitimately won another ling- ring last season. They could have beat the Lakers, but no, no, he just have to go home and eat donuts in South Cal- Southern California. Just, okay, cost you a ring. Is getting pretty dry from all the salt you're putting out, buddy. Uh, it's a hydration break. What is it? Bar hive, stay hydrated. Oh, there you go. I don't even have water. I shot tequila earlier. That's it. Um, Got to stay even more hydrated. I I don't know. I think he, he needed to leave. I don't think they could have repeated. I think they got extremely lucky. I do feel I had there been no injuries. Warriors would have won. I'll admit it. No injuries. Warriors would have won. Game series, but Warriors might have taken it. Warriors karma, would have won. Which is karma for Kevin Love and Kyrie being out in their first chip. Chris Kawhi Paul. When they were up 30 points. And then Chris Paul being out when they were up 3-2. Just saying. So, like, I'm yep. not saying, obviously, I love Clay. He's got more. He's ninth in all-star voting for guards. And he hasn't touched the court in two years, which. Everyone loves Clay. Him. Everyone loves Clay. Except for Damian Lee. Was it Damian Lee who was shitting on? No, who's the guy he was making fun? Rodney Magruder. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't like Clay. But, yeah, I don't know, man. I think I think Clippers can pull it out. And then bottom, you said T-Wolves and Pels. I would say Pels above T-Wolves. I wouldn't even say. That's a tough West. Dude, I'm, I'm putting Pels down there. I don't think. The Dallas Mavericks um, losing skid will last much longer. Luca will do something. He has to. And I OKC, the, I still OKC believe. OKC is rebuilding, though. which is They're rebuilding, but I still believe. I, no, I love Shy, Lou, all of them. Yeah. Canadian guy. But I still think because they're in a rebuild, you look at every other team, the Pels are still pretty raw. Brandon Ingram. I hated him when he was on the Lakers. I thought he was a waste of a draft pick. I did not think he'd have any use. I thought he'd be a wannabe Kevin Durant. But my God, as he turned into a monster. Still needs to elevate his game to like the same thing with Donovan Mitchell. Playmaking and winning. Like He doesn't have anything that translates to winning, but he is a talented, talented player. Lonzo should be traded. <laughs> I, I think it's pretty clear which ball brother is better now. <laughs> Leangelo. Um... <laughs> Well, I, Shut think up Pistons. Have, I think Pels have stuff going for them. Josh Hart, I've been disappointed with. He could have been Alex Caruso, but he turned into Tragic Bronson, which was unfortunate. He's still a good player. Like, if he I, was given the right role or a good team, I think he could take over as, like, a solid starting role player. For the talent that New Orleans has, they should not be 12th place. They should not be this close to the bottom. 
Like, look at the teams that are surrounding them. You've got the Kings. That's why I'm saying OKC is going to be worse than them. I think the, o- the Thunder are going to do better. I, I believe in Shy. I, probably, I, I personally disagree. I think I voted Shy All Star every time because I love him. I think his game is so bold, smooth, and brilliant. But I think we can both agree T Wolves have to be the last seed. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. <laughs> No way. Anthony Edwards, did you see that one dunk he had the other night? Uh, no. <laughs> that, like, all the way back to a nice slingshot. That was the first glimpse of him I've seen where I'm like, okay, he was a number one pick. But his play is so inconsistent. Decision-making is rough. Like, LaMelo is, LaMelo is better. LaMelo has been outshining him in every single category, which was literally what was expected. But McGee whatever. Said he, this, like, and people are going too crazy about, oh, yeah, basketball is a job for me. It's not what I want to do or whatever. But it does show. Yeah. A little bit. I don't think it's, like, going to define him. I think he's going to eventually get maybe, like, a couple all-star shots because he is a talented player. And he is a beast physically. But, man, he's just disappointing. I agree. He feels like how Andrew Wiggins felt when Jimmy Butler arrived. You have such high hopes. I feel bad for T-Wolves fans. They're so, <laughs> so sad. They're so sorry. Just think about it. Cat's been out for forever. They trade for D'Lo, and D'Lo is putting up some of the worst usage numbers in the league. Andrew Wiggins stole their money and left. <laughs> Jimmy Butler came, beat them with their th- with third stringers, and then left. Got him to the playoffs. Jimmy Buckets did what he was supposed to do. And then they couldn't follow up. So that's not on Jimmy. But I don't know, man. T-Wolf fans just seem like they're in a pretty bad rut. And I don't, I can't see them getting out. Like no matter how many draft picks they get, it's an organizational thing. Like you can tell which organizations are structured. And they how. are, you're not going to like this. They're the Oilers of the NBA. I Sit on the- that. What? I'll say the Cavs are the Oilers of the NBA. End of the day, end of the day, all three garbage. Just throw away the whole organization. This is not a hockey podcast. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about the Cavs as well as the Wolves here. You just throw away them all. Who's in a playoff spot right now? Oh yeah, the Cavs. Let me just let me look at the Eastern Conference standings. Oh, just kidding, they're ninth. Fuck. Sorry. Damn. Well, so look at that. You uh, you slipped up there. The Cavs are ninth. Oh, the Raps are the Raps are in a playoff place though. Yeah, it took them long enough though. Okay, you know what? It's because Pascal Siakam only knows spin move. So considering that he only knows spin move, predictable game in the NBA. <laughs> and trust me, pretty good. They made it to eight. It's hard to defend sometimes, but if you can have a team that knows about it, they can send that help over, and you have to kick out, force a bad pass, bad shot. And then you run it back, which is how I saw. Been. I saw a meme posted on House of Highlights a while back of some people imitating like basketball players, and the first one was Pascal Siakam, and it was just spin move, spin move, spin move, and Kyle Lowry liked it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, Kyle Lowry, man, he should be retired, made a Canadian citizen honorarily. He has done so much. I, everyone's saying trade him. Why? No. Why? No. Just let him no. finish his career. Let him vibe it out. He he brought us a ring. He's good. Keep him on payroll. We're, we're good He's with it. the heart of the team. If not, trade him to the Spurs. Get him back with DeRozan. No, 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 no. You bring DeRozan back here. You reunite them here, Ethan. Who do they have the shooting guard? They don't have many good... Well, we got Freddie and Kyle, but Kyle, make Kyle six man. Put DeRozan in the starting lineup. No, they don't see you. With, you you trade, start... Trade Norman Powell and Chris Boucher. I feel like Chris Boucher could thrive with Pop. Why would you want to trade those two? You trade Pascal Siakam. Just get just get Pascal out. You just you bring DeRozan back. That's actually a better point. I was thinking he's their only star, but like he's not even. I think even... Fred Van Fleet could be a better star with Chris Boucher. Chris Boucher yeah. is pretty raw. I'm gonna pivot this to our next topic and look at the all-star voting. The first result ballots came in, I believe, a day or two or three ago. I don't know when. It doesn't say in the article. But the first fan ballot votes have returned. And looking at it in the front court, I do not see Pascal Siakam even in the all-star voting. Jeremy Grant, higher in the all-star voting. 
Julius Randle higher in the All Star voting? I, you look I, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so here's my thing too. Who do you think is the biggest shock to see even in there at all? Jeremy Grant for sure. The Pistons Jeremy are Grant. garbage. But Jeremy Grant, I'll give him credit. I was super mad that the Nuggets let him go because I do love the Nuggets. They're my secondary team because they used to have two Canadians. Now they just have one. Oh, well. But I didn't Absolutely. also like that. I also hated Nikola Jokic, but he's put in a lot of work. Like, he's slimmed up. He's got footwork. He's got speed. Never thought I'd say Nikola Jokic has speed. <sighs> but they're a good team. But Jeremy Grant was that guy who could stop LeBron, who could stop Kawhi, or at least put in an effort. Now they've kind of lost that because Gary Harris is not big enough for certain players who are, yeah. like, superstars. Um, Jermichael Green... All right, not great defensively. Michael Porter Jr. is a turnstile who plays AAU basketball. I have a vendetta against Michael Porter Jr. I'm not. Why? Because he's exactly, he literally skipped college. He never had the developmental phase of converting your AAU game into an actual game that has any intelligent play to it. Watching him in playoffs when he got minutes, he was sure he'd shoot five for 10, but those five misses were the dumbest shots I ever seen if i had a highlight reel which we'll get our highlight guy taco um he's got nothing to do right now he's he works for us um i'll get taco to pull up highlights of him in those times or reel of him just chucking up threes in the most aau fashion you dribble in you pull up and you hope it goes in or just these drives where you drive into the crowd which would just drive me insane or try and pull up, but he had coverage on him and have to pass out. Like so many of his decisions, which was understandable. It was his first year actually playing, but I want to see that maturity. So right now I think his praise is overhyped. I think his future is great, but I don't like his praise right now. That's fair enough. Cause he's a flamethrower. He's, he's got the talent. I, after- I, I like Jeremy Grant on the, the nuggets, but come on for, well, the position the Pistons are in, I don't think he deserves to be that high. Well, I'm trying to think. Like, it's well, not like he's averaging crazy Zion, numbers. Zion the, how is Zion so high? Zion's sixth in voting in the Western front court, which is good enough to get you into a spot. As a reserve, okay, Zion is six, and Andrew Wiggins is also up okay, there. I want to talk about Andrew Wiggins. <laughs> I have been on Andrew Wiggins since day one. I've seen, I know he has his Wolves days. He was in a bad organization, but you look at how he's oh, played. yeah, putting it on the organization. He defense. He's no, his nickname in the Warriors is two way Wiggins. Did you ever think you'd hear Wiggins playing defense in college? Elite defender, but it was college. He was physically ahead of everyone else. NBA, he has not translated on the defensive end. Offensively, he can be a bucket if he feels like it. But on the Warriors, he's playing consistent basketball, not just going 25 and then 12, 12, 25, 25, 30, 12, 12. He's actually putting up consistent mid-level statistical numbers, small standard deviation. That was my stats course talking. Wow. And he's been looking good. Like he's playing well. You can tell we're educated. Oh, yes. We're, we're so good we're not going to talk about our careers. <laughs> College kids. Yeah. Um, no, I'm so happy Andrew Wiggins is that high. I voted for him every day. I'm hoping he gets in there just just, just because he's put in change. Okay. Now, the one that I want to talk about is guards in the East. I am yeah. actually kind of disappointed that LaMelo Ball was not voted into the top right. 10. That was kind of shocking because you have the Lonzo hype. And LaMelo arguably has just as much of a cult. I guess the LeVar LeVar talk has gone down. It's gone down significantly. Like, you barely hear from him anymore. So that might play into why LaMelo's not as hyped up, and that might have been a good business decision for them. But I don't think so. I think think he's not actually an all-star, but he's playing well. And it's it's cool to see a guy actually you've watched since a kid when he had the chicken wing shot on all his life mixtapes with Chino Hills. And you see him come up, become a brilliant player. I'm shocked I would say that, but he's I'm amazing. not really shocked. I've I've liked Lamelo from the start. That you everyone's seen that one shot of him at Chino Hills where he like pointed at the, the half court and then just pulled up and it was a splash. It was just like, yeah, 
He's going to the NBA. <laughs> I've liked him from the start. I you think know, he should have gotten there, some, there were some more voting. In- there are some players like that who I thought would make it, like Jordan McCall, Jelly Fam, like all those guys didn't make it. But the kid with the chicken wing shot who pulled up from half court was the dude who made it. I find that hilarious. It's awesome. Like these guys who worked their entire life grinding with Steph Curry, like gone to all the camp, gone to all the stations, gone the college route, but just bombed in college. Like, and then Lamelo just goes to Australia and becomes a god. Like, okay. No, no. First he goes to Lithuania, then he comes back for high school. And then he goes, goes to Australia. To yeah. <laughs> well, also Colin Sexton. I I would like to like Zach Levine. Like Bulls suck. I like the Bulls. I like Lowry Marketing. I like Kobe White. Kobe White. That's so love. Wow. That's, so that's crazy. Love. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> And also Derek Rose, he's a good that's a feel good story. You always like to see him up there, even though he is on Detroit. Poor guy, get him out. But I want Derek Rose on a championship team. Okay, and here's the thing too, because this was one of my answers to my questions for stock of the season. Christian Woods. Woods, sorry, not Woods. I don't even know his name because he's only relevant this year. But what? my God, does he deserve so much? He has put in work, and I think he deserves to be in the front card in All Stars. Like Andrew Wiggins, but get Zion off there. Zion, he's on a worse team. He's putting in mediocre efforts. Like sure, he's really talented, but it's just hype. It's just hype. He's not out of all the number one picks in the NBA in the most recent years. I do not think I would put him super highly among them. I agree. There was legitimate concern among people that he would actually get voted the rookie of the year over Jaw last year. People were actually worried that that would be a thing. I He's played a fraction of the total games that these other guys have played. I don't think he deserves anywhere near this much hype. John Morant also in spot, fourth spot, so he would be locking down a guard position in the West. Jaw deserves it. I like that. But you look at guys like Book, Chris Paul, Donovan Mitchell, and Clay, obviously. And it's just, it's a tough decision. Because obviously, Steph and Luca make sense. Lillard, obviously. That's where you see the drop off in voting and literally 700,000 vote drop off. Yep. And that's where it becomes highly contested. I think Book is not getting enough love. The fact that he's 60,000 below. Donovan he's not. The Suns are fourth in the West. They're fourth. Well, yeah. They do, we they, they do not get the love they deserve. He had been the flamethrower to start his career. He put in work, but he never had a winning team. Now he's on a winning team, putting up good numbers. But he's not getting voted into All-Star, and that is hurtful to see. I really hope the coaches come in with that one, because Book deserves it so much. I cannot I wait to that. see Playoff Book. Oh, we haven't even I'm seen it. I'm so excited like for Playoff book? book. Bubble Book? My God. Bubble Book was unreal. He's Hall of Fame. All time great. Bubble Book is yeah. up there. The shot he hit over Kawhi was certified. This guy will get a chip. It if was over happened, Kawhi and Paul George. Both of them were on him. I will bet my house, which I'm renting, um, <laughs> that <laughs> Devin Booker will, by the end of his career, he will not be a ringless player like Chuck, like Steve Nash, like John Stockton, Carl Malone. He will have a ring, at least one. Okay, but I'm going to just fact check, a st- fact check my statistic here quickly. Of the couple names you gave me, you gave me four names, right? Carl Malone, John Stockton, Charles, and, and Steve Nash. None of them have rings. 50% of them played for the Suns. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And that's what. MVP and actually went to the finals too. (laughs) So 50% were ringless and they played for the Suns. Which organization does Devin Booker play for? It adds up. One fun fact I heard on a video the other day. I forget the channel. I'll shout them out on our social if anyone ever cares to call us out for not shouting them out on our social. Talk Um, about it. Take care of it. Yeah, exactly. This guy made a 10-year stat thing where he compared the best 10 statistical years of a player's career. Chuck 
dominates Tim Duncan. Except for the fact that Tim has hardware, Tim got chips, and Tim had a longer career, more sustained, more consistent. But Chuck in his prime is like top two power forward all time. Easily. Okay. I have a question for you. Oh, shit. Is a longer prime, but granted a little bit less extreme, better compared to a shorter, but more extreme prime? So we're talking like T Mac versus Timmy. Yeah. I'd rather have a longer career because it gives you a bigger window to win championships and be an actual like an actual contributor. Because that's fair. You can think I about like it. you can have a short burst, have like one or two years where you're a god. You're putting up insane numbers, 35, 12, and nine, like soon to be Luca numbers. But you only do that for two seasons. You have a two season window to win a championship and be crowned that guy. Like get that on your legacy, which is what at the end of the day a lot of players want, and what matters in these debates that we everyone has, all us meaningless people have. So, if you're a guy like Timmy who has a 20 year career where arguably 15 of those years were his prime, no, yeah. arguably 18 of them, 18 years of prime. I mean, prime. the dude never missed the playoffs. Like, did he ever miss? No, never. No, he didn't. He always won, and he always think about it when you're that good consistently. I'd rather take that any day. Yeah, same. It just gives your team a better chance. Exactly. Here's a question I was always I was asked as a kid too. If you were put if you had the choice to play for a better team but get less minutes versus a worse team but get all the minutes, what would you play as? I'd I'd pick the better team, I'm not gonna lie. I want the ring. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. My argument from one of my coaches, I'm talking from a like AAU, like youth basketball perspective. If I'm a player who's like a young gun trying to get up, I want reps. So I want to be on the worst team and build that team up, or at least show my worth and get put on a better team after. Yeah. Then wait on a team. You can work in silence. Like, trust me, I, I tried doing that route. And it, there's nothing wrong with either route. I'll do either, but like, you can remove, make moves in silence, or you can just jump to the chase. And I think it would be better to, I think it'd be better to put your own work out there first, trying to get your reps. I mean, it goes both ways. You can make a name for yourself. Imagine, for imagine. <laughs> yeah, but then you get an mm, NBA context. This question gets a bit fuzzy because you get a big contract if you're on any winning team. Like who? Uh, Tristan Thompson's ninety million dollar contract after the finals. Oh my <laughs> god! That was a win for Canada. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he's an American now, and he dated a Kardashian. He's a baby daddy to a Kardashian. So we we don't talk about that. having that jersey. That jersey's been subject to a lot of jokes. <laughs> And for the record, I just hung those jerseys up like that just for the show. I do not display them like that. Um, final series, final segment of the series, or of the night. What time are we at? It's almost an hour. Really? Look at us, content creators. Damn, it's not easy. How has Matab not succeeded yet? Like, come on, man. You gotta get your, <laughs> try to get your game up. We're calling out our boss. I'm not calling. Hey, Matab, please cut this part out. <laughs> Let's call him daddy. And we'll just rip off, call her daddy, and just say, call him daddy, which has no humor context to it. I thought he was Taco. Yeah, we'll just call Matab Taco from now. Matab's our Taco. Matab's Taco? H- Jose is, is your yeah, alter ego who does the fact checking. Just turns to the other monitor, turns <laughs> back. Jose. <laughs> and that's called preparedness. And that is what you will expect from this yes, podcast. Sir. Once again, still feels weird talking to an audience that is non-existent. Hey, we don't know that. I'll I'll watch it. I'll be our audience. Oh, really? You know? I don't want to watch it because I don't hear my voice, and it could either be really good or not. Just you just cringe a little bit. That's that's it. That's it. You you move on. Speaking of moving on, <laughs> final segment of the series at the end of every episode we're doing this thing called the goat series where i have a timer shout out to one plus and google and we're going to each give 30 second arguments 
or the GOAT in any statistical category that we choose for that week. So once those 30 seconds are up, or I'll do a coin toss even, I do have change. Let's see who goes first. Once those 30 seconds are up, we get two minutes, wild debate, interrupting, being assholes, whatever we need to do. Are the rules clear? Yes. All right, call it in the air. All right, tails. Heads, I get first pick, and I choose you get to go first in the debate. All right. And the subject for this debate, we also have to have differing opinions. I'm gonna let you take the subject because I didn't plan that far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's see. It's, it's all star voting. Maybe we'll pick a GOAT debate relevant to all stars and the current NBA. Okay. Um, Greatest all star play of all time. Oh, okay. Okay. I think that's a pretty niche one in, fest in the festive interest. Okay, I want to pick the super cringy one. The dunk from. Wait, am I starting my timer? Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Start the timer. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so Dwayne Wade's One Last Dance. Um, that's what it was called, right? When, uh, when he was in the All Star game and he did his final lob to LeBron James on his team. And they, they took the same picture, like that one game against the Bucks when, when uh, LeBron postered, with oh, Dwayne like, running away like this or whatever. And this time he was looking and facing LeBron and everyone in the comments was like, oh, it's because, it's because he knew it was his Time's last time up. watching it live. Time's okay. up. Time's up. I'm gonna cut you off, but I'm gonna keep rambling because this is a dictatorship. All right, mine is, is regime. Kyrie's insane layup package in 2014 in the New Orleans. I don't know if 2014 was New Orleans, but I'm not gonna focus on semantics because that's not what we do here. Um, he was just going off. He did some layups that I went and tried to do the next day in the gym because that's one of those things where you're inspired by a player and you're like, I want to try and do that. So I would go up, I'd go with my left, switch under, act like Dwight Howard was there, flip it off the glass with the English. The English was insane. He had some nasty, like, touches, touching his knees. Like, the man was going off. And that was 30 seconds. Okay. And these are also just terrible picks for all-star greatest moments, but we can debate them. I mean... So At least mine included the greatest pair of all time. You said Kyrie isn't? You're going to argue Kyrie Irving is the greatest player of all time? All right, two minutes is up. Kyrie Irving is the greatest player of all time. He hit the step back shot in the three to one comeback. He gave the Cavs the championship. He was the greatest player. So wow, okay, Steve so now you're going to argue that Ray I'm Allen saved kidding. LeBron's legacy. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We're not going to go that path. <laughs> no, but the Kyrie layup package, because he got all-star MVP that year. That year was one of the better all-star games pre-new rules where they do the uh, the draft and they pick their teams and they do the charity stuff. This was right. This was the last good game before they switched into that because it would just been so bad before. After New Orleans and before the new format, it had been bad for all-star weekend. So that was the end of an era and capped off by a fantastic performance showing off some of the greatest skill ever and arguably the greatest skilled player ever of all time. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, all four of our fans, that's right, we gained one in the last 20 minutes. All four of our fans are probably going to be disappointed that we didn't bring a Kobe moment into oh, our all star picks. MJ, I think, okay, I think we both agree Kobe talking to MJ about rings, arguably, not arguably, I think we can both agree as consensus. We were both being morons for our picks. Yes. <laughs> Going up I thought him. of mine in like three seconds and I didn't put any got, thought into it. I got six rings and I was like, oh, I can't say shit to that. That's just respect. And we got to show Kobe a little love because every podcast has to do it. We're not going to get into a Kobe topic for a while because that'll just hit too hard. It will. But yeah, also the Kobe All-Star game where they wore their own jerseys where he was with um, KG, AI was in it. I don't know what year it was, but it was one of the craziest. That's where the year they had the side cam, the rail cam, which they've been brought back this year and is so nice. Was that the the poster, the the, the wallpaper everyone has of Afro Kobe slamming mm -hmm. a dunk? 
You remember uh, that one? His, that might have been in his dunk contest, but I think it was Afro Kobe. Yeah. No, no, it was it was in the All Star game. I saw it. Um, oh, Fro- the, yeah, Froby when he was yeah, that was that game. Yeah. So yeah, I think fun. when them naming the All Star MVP after Kobe, pretty fair. He had some yeah. of the best All Star moments ever. I like that. And then would not be disappointed if they sometime down the road change the MVP name the actual MVP name to Kobe Bryant. We'll be only on one MVP though. I wouldn't be upset. I'm not saying like, I think it'd be a good honor thing, but I think the all-star MVP is more fitting. It's fair. But I will also say um, something about Froby that game. I forgot it completely. But yeah, you had Jason Kidd in that game too. Jason Kidd's wrong. All right, so that concludes the first episode, unless Arsh has any final remarks of Two guys, one ball. Who has the um, ball? You, you decide. And with that, we conclude with our final statement that LeBron James is still the greatest player of all time. For, well, once he retires. Okay, so thanks for listening or watching or whatever Taco decides to do with this. But yeah. Cool. Have fun. So what, what's our sign off, Arsh? Um, I, I didn't you really think, think this way because this is this is just getting really fucking awkward. Uh.